So an overview of mitosis, uh, we have six different phases here, starting off with interphase, then prophase, then prometaphase, metaphase, then anaphase, and then telophase. So we typically have a nice, uh, or cytokinesis, sorry, here is the, the um, final step. We often utilize this uh, kind of mnemonic here and acronym, I, IPMAT. Okay, IPMAT is um, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So you, you kind of have to remember prometaphase and cytokinesis are, are also on there. So if we start with interphase, 90% of the cell life cycle is engaged in interphase. This is when a cell is doing its everyday job. It's producing RNA, synthesizing proteins and enzymes. <laughs> so it, it also can prepare for duplication if it's triggered. So if you come down here, you can see in this uh, little pie chart here, that mitosis is very small segment, but we also have G1, S, and G2, which we're going to learn about here in a second. So um, the cell cycle has this life cycle. So cell is formed from a mitotic division. So if you look, we can have a cell growth and mature to divide again. So this is where we'll go through the process of G1, then S phase, then G2, then mitosis. <clears throat> in epithelial cells, blood cells, and stem cells are going to do this. Uh, some of the cells in our body, though, grow and mature, and then they never divide again. So in this case, we're going to go from G1 into GO, which is just resting. Okay, This is going to be brain and nerve cells and muscle cells. Now. Some cells, in particular the liver cells, have the ability to come out of G0 if they're triggered to develop new cells. This is how the liver has the ability to regenerate itself if need be. So, interphase, digging in a little bit deeper, is divided into three phases. G1 is the first gap or growth, however you want to think of it. G for gap or G for growth. And this again is when the cell is doing its everyday job. If it is there permanently, we consider it to be in G0. If it's in G1 and will soon go into the synthesis phase, then that's when we call it G1. So um, again, in G1 or G0, the cell um, could be doing its everyday job. If it continues to grow, there could be a signal to divide. If this is the case, DNA synthesis will occur in the S phase. This is a very common test question. Many students were going to get tricked when I, if I ask you where is DNA synthesized, and you're going to give me one of these S, one of these phases in mitosis, because this is where we spend most of our time. Uh, but in fact, it is an interphase. So definitely want to make sure you put an asterisk around this somewhere, you, or you become very aware of it. This is where we're copying the chromosomes. Now in G2, this is the second gap or growth phase and this is where we are preparing for mitosis preparing for the cell division we're going to produce more organelles and more membranes and so again in interphase and up here look at this green are key features things that you need to know so a nucleus is well defined in the interphase DNA is loosely packed in the long chromatin fibers so not in the characteristic chromosomes that we think of we are preparing for mitosis. Uh, here's where we might replicate the chromosomes, again in the S phase, um, and we can produce proteins and organelles. So if we look at the S phase again, copying and replicating DNA, synthesis phase of the interphase, um, preparing DNA copies correctly to two daughter cells. So in the human cell duplicates about three meters of DNA. Each daughter cell gets complete identical copy. This has an error rate of about one in every 100 million bases. So if there's three billion base pairs in a mammalian genome, that's about 30 errors per cell cycle. Okay, that you tell me if that seems like a lot. Um, but the mutations to a somatic body cell, so if you figure this is a mutation that's happening to, say, a skin cell, We'll never really gonna know it uh, because again we're not making we're not making sex cells here we're not making gametes we are just making say a skin cell or a liver cell or a muscle cell 
So if there are mutations, it doesn't mean much is what we're getting at. Organizing the DNA, uh, many questions here on this. You also might want to refer back to Chapter 5 in DNA as you're learning this. It would be a good time to review DNA. So DNA is organized in chromosomes. So if you see, um, typically here is where we have a chromosome. It is a double helix DNA molecule. So if we start up top here, remember we have our A, T, C's, and G's double helix, that's where they're added together. Then you're going to see the wrapped around histones in this yellow circle here is a histone, it's a protein. Um, then it starts to get folded around these spools of histones and the DNA protein complex we call chromatin. Okay, and it's organized into a long thin fiber. So here's the, the chromatin. You can see it starts to coil and coil and coil. As we take those coils and we squish the coils together, that's when we get our chromosome condensed further during mitosis. So here's a duplicated mitotic chromosome. And this one is also a double stranded chromosome. Notice one strand that's kind of connected here at the centromere. Um, Let's learn a little bit more about that. Copying DNA and packaging it. So after DNA duplication, again, in the S phase of interface, uh, the chromatome condenses, coiling and folding to make a smaller package, such as a chromosome. So here's our DNA. Here's the chromatin. And then it's going to condense all the way into the mitotic chromosome. So here you have just kind of the, the spaghetti of DNA, which could just be the chromatin not organized into chromosomes. Then here it's organized into chromosomes, and here we're, we're very well into mitosis. So again, here's the double-stranded mitotic human chromosomes. This is the typical what's what students and people think of when they think of chromosomes. But there is uh, other ways of organizing them. So the mitotic chromosome, if you have just one chromosome, it's up here. Then you're going to see it duplicates, it has a centromere, and then it gets split, the distribution of new chromosomes down here in red. So, a duplicated chromosome, we have two sister chromatids. So, and it's narrowed at the centromere, so you can see the centromere is kind of like a, a belt tightening around two of them. And it can, these sister chromatids are identical copies of the original DNA. So here's two homologous chromosomes and they're separate. Okay, um, Maybe this is chromosome 12 and so here's chromosome 12A and here's chromosome 12B. Okay, One came from mom, one came from dad or something to that effect and so we'll learn that's a little too oversimplicated. Um, but in any case when they're homologous, they have the same information, meaning that chromosome 12 is going to code for the same stuff. So here it's single-stranded. You're going to see that these, they double up. So here is chromosome 12A that is now a double chromosome. Here is chromosome 12B that is now a double chromosome. Okay, or double-stranded. And these are the sister chromatids. Okay, so now we actually have four sister chromatids that are identical. Okay. So, mitosis. Dividing cells DNA between two daughter nuclei. This is called the dance of the chromosomes. It's in four phases. Uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So, prophase, is the chromatone condenses. This is where we get these chromosomes. We see the visible chromosomes and the chromatids. The centrioles move to opposite poles of the cell. Um, in an animal cell in this case. So protein fibers cross cell to form a mitotic spindle. So you can see down here we got the centrioles and the mitotic spindle kind of the these uh, arms are reaching out here across the cell and these microtubules are made up of actin and myosin. Again you might remember that from chapter 6 and these coordinate the movement of the chromosome. The nucleolus, this lining around the nucleus, starts to disappear. You're going to see in the, in the following slides that the white line and the purple is going to disappear. So it starts in prophase. And the nuclear membrane also starts to break down. So you can see here with the white, the fragments of the nuclear envelope here. So as we transition into uh, metaphase, or if we're in pro-metaphase, um, 
the spindle fibers attached to the centromeres. You can see that down here uh, in, the, in the purple and large chromosome. And when they attach to those centromeres, we change the name. We call it a kinetochore. Okay. It's still technically a centromere, but we just change it because now it's attached to the spindle fibers. So we call it a kinetochore. Microtubules attach at kinetochores. Connect centromeres to the centrioles. So, in other words, a kinetochore and these spindle fibers, we are attached from here all the way into here. So, and then this is where the chromosomes start to begin moving. So if we're here in metaphase, they're, they're kind of attached. They all line up at the equator, meta meeting middle. So they're lining up at the middle. Chromosomes align along the middle of the cell. We call this the metaphase plate. Um, the spindle fibers coordinate the movement, helps to ensure chromosomes separate properly. So again, what we're trying to do here is separate um, these chromosomes together. So here's chromosome 12A and here's chromosome 12B. We need to separate them um, so that we end up with a chromosome 12A and a chromosome 12B in every single new cell. So, so each new nucleus receives only one copy of each chromosome. Okay, um, if you look up here, this is what we end up having. We've got a kinetochore microtubules overlapping non-kinetochore microtubules, so they're just going across. Um, in anaphase now, sister chromatids separate at the kinetochores, so they move to opposite poles. Again, sister chromatids separate. All right, so if you remember, we still have 12A and 12B here. They're separating. Here's 12A separating. Maybe here's 12B separating. All right, so we move to opposite ends of the pole, pulled at the centromeres, pulled by the mo motor proteins walking along the microtubules, walking along the actin and the myosin. And they do this by an increased production of ATP by the mitochondria. So the poles move further apart, and the polar microtubules lengthen. And the separation of the chromatids, again an anaphase here, proteins holding together sister chromatids are inactivated. That's why they separate. And they separate to become individual chromosomes. So here's our two sister chromatids, one chromosome, two chromatids, double stranded, and then we are going to end up separating them. So we end up with two chromosomes single stranded. So uh, this is a great experiment and we're going to do this one in class so you, hope you might want to refer back to your your notes in class on this but chromosome movement um, people didn't know where it was going were the chromosomes uh, shortening at the chromosomes or were they shortening at this the uh, centrioles well the kinetochores use motor proteins that walk chromosomes along the attached microtubule. The microtubule shortens by dismantling at the kinetochore, and at the, meaning at the chromosome then. So if you look at, back at this experiment, they took these uh, spindle fibers and they cut them. Put a mark right here. And then they show, well, is it still shortening? And it turns out, yes, they did still shorten. Even though it was disconnected from its uh, centrioles, it continued to shorten because the shortening happens at the chromosome in and not at the centriole. Okay? So, uh, in the final phase here of PMAT is telophase. The chromosomes arrive at opposite poles. The daughter nuclei form. The, nu um, the nucleoli form, you can start to see here's our little nucleoli starting to form, the nucleolus. This is where, um, again, RNA is made. So the chromosomes disperse, no longer visible under a light microscope. Spindle fibers disperse, and then cytokinesis begins. And this is where we actually call the, the division, the, the dividing or the splitting of the cell. So uh, cytokinesis in animals, do a little bit of comparison analysis here between animals and plants. In animals, there's a constriction belt of actin microfilaments around a, the equator of the cell. So you can see that here with the, the blue arrow. And this is where we call the cleavage furrow forms. Splits the cell in two, like tightening a drawstring. So here you can see the cytokinesis in animals. This is going really fast. Uh, I will show these different movies to you in class. It's on CellsAlive.com. Um, here you can see that cleavage furrow starting uh, down here as well. We're kind of tightening that belt and then it's going to end up with two daughter cells.
okay cytokinesis in plants is a little bit different we actually have to have these vesicles containing a cell wall here um, start to make a cell plate when the cell plate uh, stretches the whole way we end up with uh, two different daughter cells so cell plate forms vesicles line up at the equator these are derived from the Golgi apparatus the vesicles fuse to form two cell membranes and a new cell wall is laid down between the membranes so this new cell wall fuses with an existing cell wall and you can kind of see it starting here and we'll look at a lot of these in class in different um, uh, activities okay so here's just mitosis and plant cells so you can kind of uh, see them all um, notice all the chromosomes are stained really dark being pulled apart here in anaphase lined up in metaphase pro metaphase that kind of um, as a starting to line up so we'll look at these in class as well uh, and that's the place to come for questions thank you